The standard nutrition advice is that we should eat less sugar if we want to improve our health. But what about the sugar in fruit? Should we be avoiding or limiting that too? Today I'm going over scientific studies on how eating fruit and drinking fruit juice affects your health in terms of inflammation, insulin resistance, cardiovascular risk factors, and more. Hey there, I'm Mish, and I am a full-time research scientist with my PhD, and by day I conduct and publish studies of my own, whereas by night I share the results of other studies here to help you reach your weight loss, fitness, health, and nutrition goals. And this request for a video on fruit sugar came from a patron over on Patreon, so if you have wanted this question answered yourself here on this channel, then you have them to thank. And in this video, I will primarily be focusing on randomized controlled trials of what happens to people's health when we make them eat more fruit or fruit juice compared to various placebo or control groups. There will be some association studies as well, and I will clarify for each one. And first, I'm going to talk about inflammation, and then I'll talk about insulin resistance and diabetes, and then I'll talk about cardiovascular risk factors, and then overall mortality, so overall risk of dying for people who eat more versus less fruit. And then I will talk about an extra really cool bonus finding that wasn't what I thought I would find, and I'm really shocked that someone studied this, especially with a meta-analysis, but it's strong and one of the coolest studies I've seen in a while. So stick around till the end if you want a little bonus crazy fruit and health fact. And I will also be talking about the optimal amount of fruit to eat per day to best reduce your all-cause mortality according to a ton of different studies. So let's get into it. Our first category here is inflammation. And a lot of people say that sugar causes inflammation and therefore because fruit has sugar, fruit also causes inflammation, just based on that logic. But what do the actual scientific studies say? In a meta-analysis of 36 experiments, so giving people fruit and seeing what happens, usually in the form of an RCT, found that giving people fruit not only does not cause inflammation, but it actually improves inflammation. So eating more fruit and giving people more fruit was found to reduce people's inflammatory markers, such as C-reactive protein and tumor necrosis factor alpha, compared to people who were not given fruit. And some examples of specific fruits that have been found to be helpful include berries, cherries, pomegranates, kiwis, apples, grapes, and oranges. And this is not an exhaustive list, but not every fruit has been studied, unfortunately, so this is a good list to start with and shows us that fruit as a category in general is very good for inflammation. And so you may be asking, is the fiber in fruit key to these effects? If we had fruit without the fiber, would we still get these benefits for inflammation? And a good way to look at that is juice, because when you juice fruit, you remove most of the fiber, and in particular, you remove the vast majority of the insoluble fiber. Now, there aren't as many studies about fruit juice and inflammation as there are on fruit and inflammation, but randomized controlled trials indicate that there are no effects of fruit juice, like general fruit juice, like orange and apple and stuff like that, on inflammation. However, for fruit juices that are higher in antioxidants, like red orange juice or cranberry juice, Studies are finding that having these juices does improve inflammatory markers just like whole fruits do. And a particularly interesting finding is how these fruit juices can help prevent other foods from causing you inflammation. So for example, one study looked at how adding orange juice, specifically red orange juice, to people's meals affected the usual inflammation that people get from eating a high fat meal. And they found that people who ate a high fat meal without any orange juice had the usual increase in inflammation that everyone tends to get from eating a high fat meal. Whereas when you added red orange juice to that meal, participants did not get that increase in inflammation. So adding an anti-inflammatory fruit juice to your meal can help prevent the inflammation that foods like high fat foods cause. And to quickly sum up the data on inflammation, whole fruits are good for inflammation and some fruit juices are good for inflammation, but overall fruit juices are not bad for inflammation. And next up is markers of insulin resistance. So people say that sugar causes insulin resistance and therefore, the sugar in fruit and fruit itself also causes insulin resistance and therefore diabetes is what I see around. And again, what do the actual studies say? For whole fruits, randomized controlled trials have found that giving people berries reduces people's postprandial insulin and glucose. So having berries helps you have less of an insulin spike and glucose spike after you eat a meal. And oranges have been found to reduce fasting insulin and fasting glucose and reduce insulin resistance. Unfortunately, other types of fruits haven't been studied as much in randomized controlled trials when it comes to insulin resistance, but so far, berries in particular look very promising. And longitudinal studies have also looked at how intake of different types of fruits predicts people's future development of type 2 diabetes. And overall, it's been found that people who eat more fruits have a much lower risk of type 2 diabetes. And I will share the list from most effective to least effective. I'm going to read it to make sure I 
get everything in the right order. And unsurprisingly, the fruits with the strongest effects by far in these studies that have been studied so far are berries. And then after that comes grapes and raisins, prunes, apples and pears, bananas, grapefruit, and stone fruits like apricots. And it, this doesn't mean that other fruits aren't effective, it's just that they haven't been studied yet. And in one weird note, however, cantaloupe was found to, in one study, predict a slightly increased risk of type 2 diabetes. So I'm very interested to see if this replicates either in other longitudinal studies or more importantly in randomized controlled trials, because that would be kind of interesting if cantaloupe are just one weirdly not as healthy fruit for diabetes. And as for juices, multiple meta-analyses agree that fruit juice does not predict any changes in insulin resistance or insulin sensitivity when looked at as a whole. So the general category of fruit juices that are made of 100% fruit do not have any effect on blood sugar control or insulin or anything like that. Interestingly, however, citrus juices may have a benefit for fasting insulin and fasting blood glucose. So the verdict on whole fruits for insulin resistance and diabetes and insulin sensitivity is that more whole fruits, except maybe cantaloupe, are very good for preventing diabetes and improving insulin resistance, whereas fruit juices are neutral and maybe slightly good for some types of fruit juices. And next onto cardiovascular risk factors, which I will call CVD risk for brevity. Randomized controlled trials on this have also unsurprisingly mostly focused on berries, and they found that eating berries improves people's blood pressure, both systolic and diastolic, as well as blood lipids and arterial stiffness and endothelial function. And one study, for example, that was a really big, well-done one over the course of six months, gave people one cup of blueberries per day and looked at what happened to all these different CBD risk markers. And they found that CBD risk markers were improved in a way that predicted a 12 to 15% decreased risk of CBD events like heart attacks and strokes. So they didn't actually look at heart attacks and strokes in the RCT, but it was the pattern of CBD risk marker reduction has predicted in other studies a 12 to 15% reduced risk of having things like heart attacks and strokes. And I imagine some of you are wondering about triglycerides, and I'm still waiting for good randomized controlled trials to come out on this, but for now, randomized controlled trials of fruit and vegetables as a lumped group, which too often happens in all these different types of studies, finds that eating more fruits and vegetables does not change people's triglyceride levels. And an association study of specifically fruits, actually a meta-analysis of association studies, finds that eating more fruit predicts lower triglycerides. So at least at the correlational level, people who eat more fruit have lower triglycerides, suggesting that fruit is at least almost certainly not bad for triglycerides. And as for the effects of juice on CBD risk, we have some very interesting findings coming from a large number of studies. So for example, a meta-analysis of 35 randomized controlled trials found that giving people fruit juice that is 100% fruit, no added sugar or anything like that, causes people to have lower diastolic blood pressure, lower systolic blood pressure, improved endothelial function, and improved arterial stiffness. So fruit juice is very good for cardiovascular risk factors. And before we get to our big, cool, crazy bonus finding, I'm going to talk about overall mortality risk. So how fruit affects your overall risk of dying. Now this of course is not a randomized controlled trial finding. This is from a bunch of longitudinal and association studies. And a giant meta-analysis of 266 studies finds that eating more fruit predicts a lower risk of death from all causes. And interestingly, this effect is non-linear, so you get the most benefit from your first increases in fruit intake. So specifically, someone who does not eat fruit or eats hardly any fruit has a 10% higher risk of dying than someone who eats 200 grams of fruit per day. And some examples of 200 grams of fruit include one and a half cups of blueberries or about one and a half bananas. So someone who eats one and a half bananas per day, according to these 266 studies, has about a 10% lower risk of dying from any cause at any given year than someone who does not eat any bananas, which is a pretty crazy strong effect, I'd say. And this is particularly crazy because these all-cause mortality studies include all causes, and that includes car crashes and things like suicides and accidents and all sorts of non-diet-related diseases. So the fact that eating more fruit predicts a 10% lower risk of death for someone who eats 200 grams per day, probably means that we're actually getting much larger reductions in risk of death from actual diet-related diseases like cancer and diabetes and heart attacks and strokes. And I imagine that eating fruit is probably not having as big of an effect on things like accidents and car crashes and whatnot. So when you pull all that together, you get 10% overall risk reduction, but 
it is most likely a much larger risk reduction from things that are actually affected by diet or causes of death that are actually affected by diet. And interestingly, there is a sweet spot or a range of optimal fruit consumption from about 200 grams to 400 grams of fruit per day. And that's about a pound of fruit per day is the upper limit. And people who eat more than 400 grams per day start to have an increased risk of mortality, but it's very slight and even the max fruit eaters who are at the very, very far end of high fruit consumption still have a 7% lower risk of dying than people who eat no or very little fruit. So to sum up the mortality findings, overall eating more fruit predicts a lower risk of death and there's a sweet spot of fruit consumption from about 200 grams to 400 grams of fruit per day for optimally reducing mortality risk according to these observational correlational studies. And now for our crazy bonus study, I cannot believe that we have enough studies to do a meta-analysis on this, but we do. And a meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials finds that adding fruit to your diet helps you with exercise-induced muscle damage. So eating more fruit causes you to have less inflammation, less oxidative stress, and less actual damage on your muscles after you work out. And so what this means is that fruit helps with exercise recovery. And I suspect this is one of the reasons why so many athletes go plant-based and then say that their performance really improved. And for example, there's a lot of plant-based NBA players out there. So I wonder if they're getting muscle recovery benefits from eating tons of fruit. So the overall takeaway from all the studies out there is that fruit is not bad for you. Fruit is good for you. Even fruit juice is good for you, as long as it is made of 100% fruit. We're not talking about like crappy concentrate sugar added stuff. We're talking about actual juice made from fruits <laughs> and only fruits. And the sugar in fruit is not causing any bad effects when it's eaten in fruit or in fruit juice. None of these studies looked at isolated fruit sugars. It's kind of a weird separate topic where we just start talking about fructose. But if you would like a video on fructose specifically or sugar specifically with health, then please let me know in the comments below. And if you want summaries on every video with all the main takeaways, I have all those over on my Patreon for each video. So you can just scroll through and read the key takeaways from every video in a nice short format. So if you're interested in that, as well as Q and A's and the ability to propose topics like this video and more, then head on over to my Patreon, which is linked in the description below. And if you find my videos interesting or helpful, then please consider supporting me in making them either through the Patreon or through the GoFundMe, which is for more one-time donations. And I really appreciate all of you who support me, whether it's through the Patreon or the GoFundMe or your kind comments, it really means a lot to me. And if you like this video, please share it and like it so that other people can get this information and learn that they do not need to worry about fruit. And in fact, fruit is good for their health. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below to stay up to date on all this science. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.